Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, random networks and, and enriching them to start to capture some properties that we actually observe in real networks. And uh, we'll talk about small worlds. And before I get into that, let me just sort of put it in context where we are in terms of the course. So again, we're talking about network formation now, um, random network models, and we had a whole series of properties that we observed in real networks that are sort of stylized facts that, that sometimes emerge um, in different contexts. And we might begin to start thinking about, well, what kinds of models would we need to match that? And so um, simple erdos renyi networks gave us some insight into why average path lengths might be small. But one thing that they didn't do very well was give an idea of, of clustering. So we saw that, that social a lot of social networks that one observes actually have clustering coefficients which look significantly different than what would have happened if we were just working with a, a nerdash renyi random network. So somehow those networks are missing um, features that are actually going on. So when we look at uh, enriching models, what we might want to do is, is start to generate some clustering. So how can it be that we get clustering um, which is, is non-trivial, and uh, you know, that's going to be one thing that we might be interested in. Um, the other thing we, we saw, we saw that the distributions didn't necessarily match the erdos renyi random graphs. We saw these fat tails. Can we generate models that have different tails? Um, can we generate more flexible classes, general classes of models to, to fit data? So that's where we're going. And in particular, we're going to start by just asking, you know, something about clustering, and then we'll move on to sort of enriching the models to become uh, richer and richer and, and try to fit more things as we go along. Um, okay, so a, an early paper, um, Watson Strogatz paper in 99, um, was basically asking the question, how do we match these two different features of networks, small average path length together with high clustering in one model? And the um, uh, one important observation is that the erdos renyi model misses clustering because the clustering is on the order of p, which is going to have to go to zero unless the average degree is becoming very, very large. And, uh, you know, with billions of, of people in the world, it's not as if we each have billions of neighbors. Um, we, we have, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of neighbors. So the idea is that uh, we, we need to have something which captures the the... Um, high clustering and yet has um, a small p. Um, and, and so their idea was what they were going to do is, is a, had the following observation. They started with what's known as a ring lattice, a, a very particular structure of a network, and then randomly picked some links and rewired them. Okay? And the idea is you, by starting with this lattice structure, you start with a network which had very high clustering but also has high diameter. And then you just change a few links in it. And the idea is that as you begin to change these links, that actually you don't need to change many links in order to get a very low diameter. So a few randomly placed links will actually shrink the diameter of a graph very uh, quickly, and the average path length as well. And if you don't rewire too many, you sort of keep this high clustering. And so let's have a, a peek at that, and, um, and then we can talk a little bit more about um, some of the conclusions of it. So here's just a picture uh, uh, I drew here of uh, um, a, a set of nodes, so 25 nodes in a ring lattice. And so initially they're connected. Each node is connected to its two immediate neighbors. So if we look here, we have node 1, and it's connected to node two and three and also connected to 25 and 24, right? So it's got these connections going here and here. Um, and then each one of the nodes is in terms of these, uh, in terms of the red, have connections to the, the different neighbors. Okay, so we've, we've, you're connected to your two neighbors. What that does is in terms of this original lattice is give you very high clustering. So one is connected to both 2 and 3, and 2 and 3 are connected to each other. One is connected to 2 and 25, and 2 and 25 are connected to each other, and so forth. So the clustering is, is high when you start. And then what you can do is, is, actually what I've done in this picture is not rewire the links, but just add a few random links. So let's just stick a few random links in the network. 
And so what happens is initially, if you wanted to get without these initial, without these random links here, if you wanted to get from node one to node 15, your path length would be quite far, right? You'd have to go sort of marching around the circle. Your path length, especially if you expanded this thing to be a much larger graph, your path length would be quite far. By putting in these few connections, these extra ones, now to get from one to 15, you just go, you know, you've got a, a fairly short path, right? You're connected at a, at a distance four. Um, to get from one to 14, you know, you're connected at a distance three. So a few of these extra things allow you to get, um, so one can get to 10 now through in, in just two hops and so forth. So a few extra links actually dramatically shortens the average path length. Um, but it doesn't change the clustering too much, right? And so if you just, you know, deleted some links, put some of these new ones in, as long as you're keeping it in this sort of sweet spot, what Watson Strogatz noticed was that you could just do a little bit of rewiring that shrinks the diameter dramatically, and yet you keep a reasonably high clustering, okay? Now, of course, if you look at this network um, and you look at the, the shape of it, uh, it's still not going to match a lot of real-world networks, um, why not? Well, because, you know, a lot of these nodes basically have degree four still or, or you know, fairly regular. So it's, it's not going to match the fat tails and other kinds of things that we actually observe. But what it does do is it begins to sort of answer some of the questions so that if the, for some reason we had high clustering on a, on a, to start with in terms of some local level, and then we just add a few random links on top of that, we can get uh, at least two features in common, right? So it gives us some explanation of how these things can begin to arise in, in common. You don't need many random links to actually shorten uh, average path length dramatically. Now, you know, this, this model is far from one we would want to take to data, but it, it begins to put some different things together. And what we're going to begin to do now is um, start to enrich the models so that they're at a level where we can begin to d look at different things, put them in, take them to data and then ask things about, you know, are we reproducing uh, a lot of the features that we actually observe in, in real world networks? So we'll, we'll take a, a more detailed look at random networks.